Hello everybody, so my name is Patrick Masson. I'm working at uh, Geneva Swiss Code Group, I'm a bioproducer. And today I'm, going to, today I'm going to talk about GoCam and how we integrate GoCam into our uh, pipeline of uh, curation. So standard genotology annotation is the association of a gene, pro or a gene product with a Go term. And the Go term are divided, as you probably know, into three different categories, molecular function, cellular component, and biological process. And these terms, actually, they do represent a isolated uh, biological characteristic that uh, it's uh, very useful to annotate protein. However, as curation goes, there are more and more uh, papers that are curating with Go, and uh, proteins receive more and more Go terms. And at the end, you have a lot of uh, proteins uh, with a lot of uh, go terms associated to them. For instance, I took the example of TRAF6. And uh, as you can see, there is uh, 14 different molecular activities associated to this protein. You have 11, uh, 11 cellular components. And you also have 52 uh, biological processes associated to this protein. And the problem is that there is no link between these uh, annotations. So for instance, it would be good to uh, capture the, con the biological context. For instance, if you create a paper, you would like to be able to say, OK, TRAP6 is a ubiquitin protein ligase that acts in the cytoplasm, for instance, and it's uh, part of the cytosolic pattern recognition signaling pathway. And it acts on Beclin 1. So for this reason, the Go Consortium has developed a way to capture a biological context with GoCam. So GoCam is a network of uh, standard Go annotations that, uh, that are linked together by uh, specific uh, relations. So the key part of a GoCam is a molecule, sorry, it's the molecular activity, which is represented by a molecular function Go term, which is enabled by a specific entity. And this entity can be a protein, RNA, or a complex. And on this key feature, which is a molecular activity, you can add several layers of uh, information. For instance, you can add the location by using a cellular component go term. You can add a biological process go term to it. And uh, if there is some uh, chemical that regulates this specific activity, you can also add uh, a KB. And uh, you have a lot of information that you can add. So a go cam is the flow of these molecular activities that are linked together by specific uh, relations. So it's a go relation ontology, and it can be like positively regulate, negatively regulate. So GoCam is a flow of uh, its activities. So here is from my uh, previous example. That's the corresponding GoCam. So you have TRAP6, RSAP means uh, human which has this uh, ubiquitin ligase activity, actin on Beclin 1, so it means it's ubiquitinates uh, Beclin 1 uh, in the cytosolic pattern recognition receptor signaling pathway in the cytoplasm that directly regulates uh, Beclin 1 activity, molecular adapter activity. So this can be seen as uh, the simplest GoCam that we can make, linking two different activities together. And the good part with uh, the... the Nice part with GoCam is that it's very flexible. So you can do a small network of two or three activities together, uh, but you can also represent a like, large pathway, textbook pathways. It's very flexible. So here is a strategy that we have in uh, SwissProt to uh, select which GoCam we are going to do. So if we look at the protein level, what we do is we usually um, do the literature about this protein with the most uh, relevant paper. We select the most relevant papers. And uh, we go on and do the update of the SwissProt entry. And now we wonder like, if, there, if there is any uh, functional interaction in, this, in those papers that we can do actually GoCam. And if yes, we go on and we do a GoCam. And if no, we just do standard Go annotation. And uh, there is an automatic pipeline that from GoCam makes standard Go annotation. Because a GoCam. It's a mix of uh, existing annotations that we can pick up and also new annotations. So that's the flow. So here, here is an example. So it's the USP20 protein, for instance, that role of this protein in the 
inhibition of NF kappa B. So as you can see, this uh, this paper represents a small uh, functional network between few proteins. So you have the USP20, which is uh, the ubiquitinase. It will remove the ubiquitin from uh, beta arrestin 2, and in turn, this uh, beta arrestin 2 will recruit TRAF6 to remove uh, ubiquitin from TRAF6, and then it will lead to the inhibition of NF kappa B. So here, I, so first, as I told you, we do the the update of the corresponding entry in SwissProt. So we, we mentioned that the USP20 is a ubiquitin enzyme and it attenuates the FTLR4 mediated NF kappa B pathway uh, uh, in collaboration with beta arrestin 2. And we go on and we do a GOCAM representing the same information. So here is the corresponding GOCAM with four different activities linked together. So if we zoom in, so I just described the two first activities. So you have, as I told you, the USP20 ubiquitinase activity acting on uh, arrestin beta 2. And it's uh, part of the negative regulation of NF kappa B. And it occurs in the cytoplasm. And this directly positively regulates the molecular adapter activity of arrestin beta 2, which has input USP20 and TREF6, meaning, meaning that they are, it adapts these two proteins, which is part of the negative uh, regulation of NF kappa B. So that's an example of a small uh, GOCAM with four different activities. So we can also, as I told you, uh, curate pathways. So here the, the flow is a bit different because for pathways we do start with a review. So we read a review of a specific biological process, for instance, and we select all the proteins that are part of this uh, specific pathway. And we go on and we look at every single uh, protein of the pathway and, and see if we can update the Swiss prot entry. And once we have done that, we, we go on and do a GOCAM because, as I told you, uh, it's a flow of molecular function. So for each protein, you have to know which molecular function it has in this pathway. It's not just like adding protein together. So you, we really have to do extensive literature for each protein of the pathway to go on and do a GOCAM. And then by, again, by the automatic pipeline, it will generate standard GO annotation. So here is the, an example of a pathway. So it's the, a well-known pathway, TLR4 signaling pathway. So it starts with the recognition of LPS outside the cell by LBP and CD14 that will transfer the LPS on TLR4 which will initiate the signaling cascade at the plasma membrane all the way down to uh, activation of NF kappa B and uh, cytokine production. And as I told you, what you see around here, it's the LPS because it's, uh, we use KB to describe the LPS. And here is the flow of all the different activities that are uh, present in this uh, pathway. So this, uh, model, this model is based on 28 publications, and for each single step, you have publication corresponding to uh, the information. For instance, here you have the why we said that uh, Iraq 2 is part of this pathway, the role of TRAF6 in this pathway, or the, uh, the role of nf kappa B in, uh, in this pathway. So each single step has a reference link to it. So I just wanted to show you a new, uh, another view that is a bit more user-friendly. So it's the view that you will see if you go on the Alliance of Genome Research, AGR website. So basically you have the, you can uh, select a protein of your interest. For instance here is you have trafsis and you have a section which is called pathway. And in this section you can choose either, uh, you can look at the, the reactome pathway the reactome reaction and the GOCAM. So then you, have, you will have the list of all the GOCAM available for this specific protein, and you will be able to see it uh, with this uh, nicer view. So basically you have like all the protein represented, and in green you have the positive uh, regulation, and in the red you have the negative regulation. And if it's a bold, uh, if it's plain uh, arrow, it means it's direct, otherwise it's indirect. And on the right part, you have all the participants of this pathway, and you can have like the green are the, the publication. So if you want to have the information that uh, this protein is uh, adapter activity, you, you can click on the, the green part and you have, the, you have access to the publication. So it's a better view to, 
to see go comes. So I just wanted to also uh, mention uh, the concept of module. So a module would be a part of a signaling pathway that's conserved among different signaling pathways. So I just took the example of NF-kappa-B because like you have a lot of different things that can trigger NF-kappa-B and then it will uh, mediate different uh, outcomes. But the NF-kappa-B flow of information is always the same in all the pathway. So the thing would be to represent this, uh, the NF-kappa-B activation and then it would be a module that we can use for different uh, pathways. So here is how we represented the NF-kappa-B module. So it's based on 14 publications. It's activation of NF-kappa-B by ubiquitination. So basically you have the, the in, uh, inhibitor of NF-kappa-B gets phosphorylated and then recognized by the ubiquitin uh, ligase adapter. And in turn, it will uh, mediate the de degradation of this inhibitor. And uh, once the inhibitor uh, in is degraded, it uh, of course inhibits its sequestering activity. Then you have the two subunits of nf kappa -B that go in the nucleus and uh, do start transcription. So basically, that's what we call a module. And this module can be used in a lot of different pathways. If someone makes an, a pathway in, uh, that has nf kappa -B in it, you, you can use this module. So the, the idea will be to, to create a library of modules that people could use and copy for, for their own pathways. So another aspect is we also can do uh, multiple organism uh, models. So here is an example. For instance, it's the a ligase pro um, uh, NFS viral protein, US3, that actually um, inhibits the TCR signaling. So briefly, you have the, 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 the herpes viral protein that sequester LAT and it inhibits the flow leading to a TCR si uh, signaling. So what's good, what's really convenient for, with GOCAM is that we can use uh, multiple organisms in the same model and we also can use uh, cell ontology because all these steps, of course, it's TCR signaling, so it means that it uh, occurs only in T cells. So we can say, okay, this, this and this, it's all occurring in T-cells. So you we can really put different layers of information. It's really convenient. So if you want to have access and uh, browse through the different GOCAMs, you have the, the portal at the Gene Ontology uh, web, web page. So you have access to all different GOCAMs made by different groups because I talked for three spots, but like MGI, Wombase, a lot of different groups are actually now uh, creating using GOCAM. And uh, you have access to, you, so for each GOCAM you can search by uh, uh, GoTerm, by publication, by a lot of different things. And that's the outcome. You will have the title with all the different publications used for this GOCAM and all the different uh, ontology, the, the, the go terms that have been used for these specific go camps and all the protein involved. So in conclusion, I will say that at uh, Swiss Pot, we plan to use GoCamp to capture human biology in the future, like uh, in a systematic way. And we, so far we have created about uh, four, you know, we have created 429 models and uh, this model led to the creation of about 5,000 new standard Go annotation. And so far, five switchpot curators are now using GoCam, and the plan is to use all, to train all the curators uh, to do GoCams. And uh, as I told you, for pathways, what we do is we look at, uh, we, we try to select a set of proteins by using review, and uh, we're now experimenting another way. It's through Pango to select a set of review to make GoCams. So Pango is another, is another tool that is developed by the Go Consortium and it's a Go annotation with the help of uh, phylogenetic, phylogenetic trees. So you have like, uh, for instance, if you look at a specific biological process, you see that uh, all the, uh, you make the look at the, in the tree and it gives a more selective uh, annotation. And uh, Mark Fireman on Wednesday will talk more about uh, Pango. So I will know not go into detail, but then from this tree and this annotation, what we do is we select the human counterpart for this specific uh, process and we do GoCam. So it's a way to select proteins. 
So to, f to finish, I would, would like to thank uh, all the people participating in this project. Like at Swissprot, we are making models like Alex uh, Inyashenko at the EBI is doing the automatic pipeline. And I want to thank a lot all the people in the Go Consortium. We create these uh, nice tools and uh, are making uh, constant improvements. So thanks for your attention. Hi, thanks a lot. Uh, great talk. I have two questions. So uh, first, uh, how does GOCAM position itself in relation to well-established pathway databases like React Home, Wiki Pathways, CAC? Uh, that would be one question. And second, uh, it looks like th th you have a, a really like well-thought-out uh, data model underneath and the structure. Uh, what is your um, what is your tool set to uh, build uh, these GOCAMs? So concerning pathway, what we do is a quite it's quite different because we, we really go, uh, we, we put go and uh, each go term is assi assigned uh, by a paper. So it's very more detailed. And uh, we, we usually do mostly like uh, small uh, functional networks in, in priority, like in the current flow as I show you in uh, Swissplot, rather than large pathways. So it's more like uh, small networks so that I don't think it overlaps other like pathway databases. That did I answer question? And just yeah. Um, I'm interested in what the uh, what the downstream uses and analyses might be because it, it, you know, there are clear uses for the single go annotations. I don't know. You can select maybe like uh, the go. Uh, as I told you, like we have created like five thousand new go terms. And these are very specific. So maybe this one could be used in enrichment analysis because they are really uh, have some context compared to the, like the whole list which was done by papers, for instance. So maybe if we do enough go, go come, we could select this one, this uh, go annotation to make enrichment or for the user. <coughs> I have one question. Sure. Oh, you have one question. Go you might regret that, but okay. <laughs> my question might be a little bit unkind because it's a problem I think that has been facing React Home and other pathway databases is how are you incorporating cell type specific, species specific, and developmental stage specific information in your pathways? So when we know the information, we, we use, uh, as I showed you for the herpes viral protein, when we know the information, we use cell ontology to, uh, to say it's cell type specific. And uh, that's how we capture the, the information. Okay, can I, uh, sorry. No. Uh, thanks, I'm here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't see, I don't hear anything. <laughs> So first of all, thanks a lot for the talk. It was very nice. I have actually two questions, but maybe I only have time for one. So I will start for the first. So the concept of a biological process is a bit redundant with the concept of pathway sometimes, isn't it? So this information might be used in the future to revise a bit the annotation for biological processes in GO, which sometimes is a bit... Uh, uh, confusing, so maybe it will help to prune a bit the annotation. Like if you annotate for a biological process, which is also a pathway, a certain number of proteins, maybe you can, that can be used to filter out other proteins that have not been assigned to the pathway. It might create some conflict. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, can you repeat? Because I didn't understand the question actually. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I was, so I, what I was wondering if, I do love the, the, the stuff that you are creating this pathway in GoCam, yeah. so, and when the pathway is also a biological process in GO, this, this great work you're doing could be used to adjust a bit the annotation for yeah, that for sure. specific. Yeah, definitely. 
we could work together with Pathway to adjust and see what they are like, lacking. Or, yeah. And same for us, like we could also take some React Home as a skeleton and uh, do some uh, GoCam out of them. Okay. Be like, uh, okay, uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's okay. I think we're out of time. So